Thanks. Hello and welcome back to the workout of the week. My name is Tommy Matthews. We've got Andy Phillips here to demonstrate the exercises. Today is slightly different. What we're going to be looking at is a movement preparation sequence for runners. This is uh, combining a variety of different equipment. Uh, using tools and methods to improve mobility and prepare the body correctly for running. Okay, So we're going to give you some ideas here which you may be able to implement with your own clients or yourself as a method to prepare you before you start going for your 5k, 10k runs, whatever it may be. So the first thing we're going to do is use a ridge roller for some self myofascial release. We're going to work through the um, lower body and we're going to focus on the gastroc, so the um, posterior lower leg. Okay, With all self myofascial release, key thing is to find those painful spots and stay in those part parts and make, make sure you release the tension before you move on to the next point. You can obviously spend quite a lot of time doing this stuff before, you're, uh, before you move on. We're going to go through this fairly quickly because we're, we're, we're filming here and we, just, we don't want to spend half an hour on this, but sometimes Andy might spend 10-15 minutes doing SMR before he might move on to the next part of this phase. So we want to make sure we get a good release and a good release of tension throughout the whole muscle area, okay, or the whole fascial area. The reason we're releasing this tension first is to allow us to move more efficiently through those joints or those complexes later, that, later on in this sequence and then obviously uh, during our running as well. Okay, so if we free up those joints, we free up those, those areas, we, we tend to move more efficiently. So you'd do both lower um, aspects of the of the lower leg we then move on to the quads so with the quads setup position is quite important with this one ridge roller is going to be on the thigh and then you're going to take the other leg out to the side um, so you're just going to find it feel a bit of sort of almost weight going onto the inside of the knee and that, that's where you can kind of take a bit of weight off the quad if you need to if, it, if you find that this is quite painful. When you are using foam rolling or self myofascial release with a roller what we're trying to look for is to get yourself to a sort of a pain scale of well think, think of a pain scale of 1 to 10 you want to get yourself to a maximum of 7 no more than that really. If it's too painful what you'll find is that you'll contract against the roller and then you won't get the release or the myofascial release that we're looking for. So try and slowly lower onto the roller, feel that pain build up and then hopefully as you're trying to relax and lots of breathing is important as well when you are relaxing as you're relaxing onto it the tension will release and once it has released and it's maybe reduced down to about a pain scale of three then you can move on to another point okay and you're just going to slowly work your way up the uh, up the quad and obviously you've got different aspects of the quad you've got the lateral uh, and the medial and then more anterior so we can work across the quad um, hitting all of those different areas if necessary. Okay, So that's a demonstration of the two SMR drills that we want you to do. After you've performed those SMR drills, we're just going to go into some single leg work. For the single leg work, we're going to load it up with a dumbbell to start off with. We're going to do a single leg hinge. And the single leg hinge, or the single leg touchdown it's sometimes known as, is essentially a movement which is going to activate the extensor chain through the body and also the spiral line. Two lines through the body which are very important for stability and control when running. Okay, so Andy's going to hinge at the hip, he's going to focus on trying to maintain a nice neutral spine, especially through the lumbar. He's going to allow a slight knee bend as he's hinging at the hip joint. Balance is obviously really important here and this is also important for improving balance coordination and proprioception which is very important when we're running. Okay, So it's a great little warm up for any runner to perform. The load is not too important to start off with, we just want a little one. So we're only working here with a 2 kilo dumbbell. Okay, Between 6 to 10 reps of this is fine on one side and then we can move on to the other side. So you'll notice it's the opposite hand touching down to the opposite leg. So right hand here down to the left foot. If you find that you can't go to a full range of motion, don't worry about that. The most important thing is that we're hinging correctly at the hip and we're trying to keep that lumbar spine in a nice strong neutral position. What we want to make sure is that we're not getting any kind of um, hitching to the side, so we're trying to keep hip, both hips level. Okay, both hips level all the time. Doesn't matter if we lose our balance, we just restart. This is all about control and stability. 
Okay, so we're going to again perform between six to ten repetitions of that. Next one we're going to perform is a single leg squat. We're going to use um, a platform here to give us a position to move to. So the single leg squat, Andy, if you can just set yourself up over there on the multiplier. We're going to use this as a step essentially to sit back onto. Single leg movement is really important when, when running. Obviously we're spending a lot of time on one leg, a lot of weight and a lot of load is going through each individual leg at any one time. So we want to make sure that we're strong and we're prepared for that. So the single leg squat is essentially great movement to develop quad strength and also good knee alignment. When we are performing the single leg squat we're just going to do some from side angle at the moment. You'll notice that we're looking at a nice neutral spine. Okay, We're focusing on balance and control here. We're using the step as a, essentially as a bit of a, um, an assister to start off with. It's not necessary to have one, it's not necessary to have this plier box here, but if to start off with with clients you may need it. We're just going to come to the front now so you can look at the knee alignment and the tracking. So we're really focusing on knee alignment coming over the toes. We don't want to see those knees falling in. Okay. To start off with, reduce the range of motion of this movement to make sure that you can improve the, the alignment. So as well as knee alignment, we're thinking about hip alignment and they're all kind of interlinked together. So if they're working well, if the glutes are working well and stabilizing correctly, then the chances are we're probably going to get good or better knee alignment. Okay, so that's our single leg squat. After we've done that one, then we're going to go into a lunge. We're going to perform the lunge with, we'll take the medicine ball for this to actually help the rotation a little bit. The lunge is a sagittal plane lunge with hip, uh, with um, trunk rotation. The trunk rotation is going to help open up the hip through the sagittal plane and also through the transverse plane. When we are running, the hips aren't still, the hips are moving quite a lot, so we want to make sure that we've opened up the hips in different planes of motion before we actually start running. Okay, so it's not just, don't just think sagittal plane all the time when we're, when we're, when we're running. You've got to think about hip movement or triplanar hip movement. So with this lunging pattern, we're stepping out, we're dropping down, we're getting solid on the floor, and then we're taking the trunk into rotation using the med ball as a bit of an additional load to help us go to that end of range. And all this is doing really is essentially opening up through the hip flexors, opening through the anterior hip, through the sagittal plane and transverse plane. Okay, after that, and essentially all of those are nice basic preparation movements. Now we're going to have to start firing things up. So number one, we're going to start firing up the, some, of the, some of the kinetic chain and some of the muscular chains. And then we're also going to start getting the heart rate up as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a kettlebell. We want to be working with a fairly decent weight kettlebell here because we're going to be doing some swings. With our swings, essentially what we're doing here is firing up the posterior chain. The posterior chain is immensely important when we're, when we're running. We need to be using that to be pulling through. Okay, so as part of our gait, we need a very good strong posterior chain. We want to be making sure that our hamstrings and glutes are always working well. What tends to happen with a lot of clients, runners especially, is that they get quite tight through the quads, their posture isn't that great, and they tend to lose the ability to use the posterior chain correctly. So the swing is a great way to fire up and activate the posterior chain, that's the hamstrings glutes. It's also a really good way to um, ensure that we've got good hip hinging as well. Not that it's necessarily specific to running, but uh, something that people, if they are quite dominant through their quads, may struggle with. Okay, so when we're doing that, we're going to perform reps of 10 to 15 maximum. We're going to rest. Okay, and we'll probably do two to three sets of that to make sure that we're fully prepared. We've got our, our posterior chain fired up nicely, and we've also got a little bit of heart rate raising as well. Obviously, we're going to go into a run. We want to make sure our heart rate's um, up there. The final exercise after the swings is going to be a box jump. We're performing the box jump to really fire up the kinetic chain. Okay, when we're running, we're moving quite dynamically. We're putting a lot of load through our body, putting a lot of stress through our kinetic chain. So we want to make sure things are prepared. So a couple of dynamic stretches and maybe a few kind of um, you know leg swings and things like that it's just not going to be enough to really fire yourself up properly for uh, for running so the box jump I find is a really good way of actually getting people really switched on uh, neurologically and physically for running so with this movement we're going to look at lots of explosive power so Andy's starting off nice and easy now, now he's going to really try and explode into these movements. So he's really thinking about getting those quads, hamstrings, glutes fired up so he can jump up onto the box. 
We're using the multiplier platform here. We've got three different levels of height on that platform. So if we wanted to, to challenge our client a little bit more, we can obviously change the height. Okay, so now we've got the uh, full 30 inches. This is the maximum height. And this means it is really gonna have to work hard to fire up that kinetic chain to get up there. Awesome. With this, you'll probably be looking at about kind of six to 10 reps maximum, because after that, you'll probably lose a little bit of power application, so you won't get the necessarily the maximal force out of the muscular contraction. So that's a sequence of uh, exercises and drills that you can utilize to prepare yourself successfully for running. It's really important that you warm up properly before you go for a run, and we think that this is a really good way to prepare yourself successfully. So have a go at that and see the difference uh, in running form and running technique, and also maybe efficiency as well and perhaps let us know how you got on on social media it'd be good to hear your thoughts